When I was a little boy, I was Little Eddie. I'm Eddie the Third, by the way. My grandfather's Edward, my dad's Edward, I'm Edward. So I was Little Eddie, Eddie the Third. Kids at school called me Eddie Spaghetti. That wasn't fun. Say, Eddie Spaghetti, your meatballs are ready. That's what they would say. That's how they tease me. And the, the jerk that started this lived right next door to me. Little Ray Ray, this little punk. So there's Little Eddie and there's Ray Ray. Why is he Ray Ray? Because his dad's Big Ray. We lived in Weymouth, Massachusetts at the time. They're wooing, but they wouldn't want to retire there. Let's put it that way. That is not Laguna Beach, is it, everybody? So my house, my my house is the same exact house as Ray Ray's. Except you know how track houses are, they just flip them. So it's his house, my house, in reverse. So we shared a driveway, their porch, their stairs to their house was here, mine was there. So when they're eating dinner, I could hear all their conversations, they could hear all ours. And Ray Ray's the one who started, Eddie's forgetting your meatballs are ready. And I didn't like it. And he used to kind of mess with me. He figured out I was kind of soft. You know, you kind of figure it out, like we're playing football in the street, he kind of whacked me and I wouldn't whack him back. You know those kind of things little kids do to figure it out he was the stud i was the weak kid he figured it out he was big i was little eddie literally little eddie really small and so ray ray used to kind of slap me around a little bit and one day we got in a little scrape behind the cars in the driveway and ray ray kicked my ass pretty good pretty damn good to the point where i ran away from him crying maybe you can relate to this and i ran into the house and my mom was on course oh my gosh Eddie, what happened mama ray ray he slapped me punched me in the face oh come here sweetheart remember come here baby we're in the kitchen and she's hugging me it's okay he's a bad boy his daddy's been in jail like three times we're just we're not that kind of family. They're mean, right? He's a bad man. I go, Mommy, he's a bad man. They're bad people. <laughs> and I can hear, I can hear, here comes Big Ed down the hallway. I can hear him. I'm thinking he's going to give me a big hug too, right? My dad, what the hell's going on in here? <laughs> My mom turns around and says, this criminal next door, Ray Ray, has assaulted our son for the 400th time. That's what's going on here. Are you going to do anything about this? And my dad goes, get your hands off him. He goes, get over here. And he gets down at my level and he goes, look at me. You are leaving this house and you are going back over there and you are kicking his ass. You understand me? I'm like, no, oh, dad, he always kicks my butt. He said, you don't come back in this house until you kick his ass. You understand me? My mom, Ed, what are you doing? Debbie, stop. It. I know what I'm doing here. Don't come back here till you beat him up. You understand me? Oh, oh, okay, Daddy. And I walk out of the door. And I walk over to their porch, which is like three steps from ours. And my dad's up behind the screen. I see him in the kitchen behind our screen with my mom. My mom's crying. My dad's like, I got this, right? And I knock on the door, their screen, and Big Ray all tatted up, no shirt on. He's through the screen. What's up, Eddie? I said, um, Big Ray, um, my dad says I have to come over here and kick Ray Ray's ass or I can't come home for dinner so and big ray goes i like that kind of party let's get it i'm serious i hear him at the door ray 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 that's how you ray ray get over here little ray little bulldog comes running up <laughs> right he goes hey little eddie wants another piece and little ray ray goes let's do this i'm like oh crap and we're walking down his stairs and i could see my dad in the screen over here i'm like oh my god and I'll never forget this. The two cars are there. My dad's Datsun B210 orange hashback and his dad's green Pinto flanked our estates right there in the driveway. Oil all over the driveway because Big Ray would change everything in the driveway. And we got up there and Big Ray goes, you get there, you get there. Go. And Ray Ray came at me. And by some force of sheer blessing from God, I got this little dude in a headlock and I'm giving him, my dad used to give me noogies. Remember noogies? So I didn't really know how to hit him, but I'm noogieing the hell out of this kid's head. Noogies. Just noogies. And I'm ripping the hair off his damn head and I'm choking him. Noogies. I'm kind of looking back at the screen and see my dad. I got him, dad. I got him, dad. And so finally, I'm noogieing this kid to death. Literally can't breathe. And so finally, Ray's going, get him, Ray, get him, Ray. I'm hearing him yell, get him, Ray. I'm like, look, he's, and I won't let him go. He's trying to squirm. And I'm like, boom, I'm kind of slapping him in the head. These little boys out there, right? And so finally, I kicked his ass, right? No. So Big Ray stops it. Big Ray pulls us off each other and he goes, Ray Ray, he got you. Let's shake his hand. And we shook hands. And I walked home. My dad's like, now get in here. Let's make some spaghetti. Let's do this, right? So proud of me.
See, the thing about push-up is once you get started, it's difficult. But let's say by the grace of God, somehow you get 20 cranked out. And then you just keep on and then you throw some prayer in the game. And next thing you know, you got 40 knocked out. But you steady press it. What you don't see is you developing a strength with that pressing. And then somehow you get to 70 and you look up and everything on you shaking. Your teeth is cracking. Your eyes is busting out your head. You can't believe what's happening to you. You get to 80, your clothes don't look the same no more. You somehow, somehow get to 90 and it's all coming loose now. And then through prayer in some kind of way, you ain't got to know how. You just got to start. See, too many people try to figure out the how. Now you're trembling. You're shaking. Everything in you is about to blow up, but you done done a hundred push-ups. Now, somebody come to you and say, man, you say, why well, I did the hundred? I'm successful now. And then you say, well, good. Now I'm successful. What I got to do to stay successful? Hold that position. After you done done 100, lock and hold. That's how hard it is to be successful. But in that mere description right there, most people go, I ain't finna try that. What got me to this position is I went ahead on and tried. I didn't even have the ability and I still have struggled. But guess what? I'm holding, but I ain't holding by myself. See, you keep going to church and you keep memorizing these scriptures, but you got to put them to application. If he all that in a bag of chips, if he can do anything but fail, why you keep bringing up the failure? It, it doesn't make any sense. You can have a life. Ain't just a Bible verse say something about uh, if you, you know, have a life, come to Christ, you have life and have it more abundantly. Something like that, right? I don't try to do that because what I don't do is I don't put myself in Bible verses that ain't got nothing to do with me. You know what I'm saying? Some of y'all always want to plug yourself into all the scriptures. Some of them scriptures is for people that don't do certain things. Then this is the result. You ain't got to plug yourself in there. Like it's a scripture that says uh, uh, something about uh, the poor. The poor will uh, always be with you. It don't say the poor will always be with you, Steve. Why am I putting myself in that Bible verse? He just talking about if you don't believe in your heart and don't doubt. He talking about if you have faith without works is dead. He talking about if you do that. Don't put yourself in there. But if you want to justify why you poor, then you whoops that one out. I don't want to be in that one so I don't pull it out and I'm saying that if you know anybody that had some goal some dream something they wanted to do and they did it then I'm saying that you know in your heart that if someone has done it then you can do it it's possible and that if someone can make their dream become a reality that it's it's possible that you can make your dream become reality and so as you begin to look at where you want to go beginning to embrace that it's possible I'm blessed and highly favored I've got a lot going for me I got some good stuff in me and it's possible that I can bring my greatness out here in the universe that I can do what I want to do it's possible I can write my own book I can have my own business I I can take the trip and travel around the world it's possible I can bounce back from adversity and reinvent my life. It's possible. Regardless of where I am, the things can get better for me. It's possible. And I'm thinking about two men right here in Chicago who are fairly successful, similar background, educated. They worked for a corporation for many years and they were among many people that were laid off. Two guys who were very good friends. One went out looking for a job for several weeks along with the other one and they faced disappointment and rejection again and again and again. They couldn't find any work, which is the story of many people across this country. One guy stopped. He became discouraged. He stopped going. He stayed home looking at television, became very argumentative and toxic with his wife, drinking beer, getting on the phone, talking to his other negative unemployed friends, and he just gave up. The other guy kept looking for a job everywhere he could go. Every time he could get an opportunity, kept asking people, networking, checking the newspapers every day, kept going everywhere he could, trying to find a job. You have too much education, you're overqualified, you won't be here long enough. He kept going, he kept going. He went to a place and said, look here, I tell you what, if you can't hire me and I know you can use my talents, abilities and skills, I don't want to sit home and do nothing. Just just let me do some volunteer work. You don't have to give me anything. All right. 
I just want to work. I want to be busy. Guy said, okay, it's on you now, but don't, don't expect me to give you anything. It's okay. This guy came in and worked. He was the first one there. The last one to leave was the best employee there. About four weeks later, one of the top managers quit. They were looking for a replacement. Guess who they selected? This other guy. This guy who was volunteering his time. He got the job. What was the difference between the two men? Eyesight and mind sight. Eyesight is judging on what you see, judging according to appearances. But mind sight is how you interpret what you see. One guy said, it's not possible, it's over, I'm finished. I can't do it, I can't make it. He surrendered, I've faced rejection again and again, I'm not going anymore. There are no jobs out there. But this other guy, he felt that in spite of the no's and rejections, in spite of how bad the economy is, in spite of what the newspapers are saying, that it's possible that somebody somewhere will give me a job. He just kept going, thinking it was possible. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? That's what we have to do with our dream. Because things happen to you in life that you can never, ever anticipate. And many times when those things happen, you want to give up. I remember when I was in broadcasting, when I was a disc jockey, I became very controversial, not only being a disc jockey, but I felt that radio was something that you not only entertain people with, but you also empower them, you educate them. Now there's all kinds of winters, not just the winter of the season. There's all kinds of winter. Winter time, the down time, the discouraging time. One writer called it the winter of discontent. The winter when you can't figure it out, the winter when it all goes wrong. Economic winter, social winters, political winters, and personal winter. When your heart is smashed in a thousand pieces, the nights are unusually long. It's called winter time. Barbara Streisand sings, it used to be so natural to talk about forever, but used to be's don't count anymore. They just lay on the floor till we sweep them away. You don't sing me love song. You don't say you need me. And you don't bring me flower anymore. A song of winter. But hey, we're acquainted with all those winter scenarios. We've been through them all. Now the question is, what do you do about the winter? Well, you can't get rid of January by tearing it off the calendar. But here's what you can do with the upcoming winters of your life. The long ones, the short ones, the easy ones, the more difficult ones. Here's what you can do. Get wiser and stronger and better. Just make a list of that trio of good words. Wiser, stronger, and better. To challenge for yourself the upcoming winters of your life, don't you think you could read more? Pick up the scenario, pick up the books, pick up the cassettes. So I would put some stuff on cassettes so you can listen to it. Put it in books so you can read it. Now putting it on video so you can see it. Telling you, anybody that wants to can get wiser. Next is stronger. Anybody can get stronger. If you're willing to do the push-ups, you can get stronger. If you're willing to put yourself through the paces, you can get stronger. Can you develop stronger skills? And the answer is yes. Start practicing, practicing, practicing. And you can get stronger. Can you get stronger in handling life situations? Of course. But you got to go to work on yourself. You can't blame out there wishing it was easier. Wish you were stronger. Here's the last one. Get better. Anybody can get better. Language, we can all get better. I've been lecturing now for 33 years, and I'm telling you, today versus 33 years ago, I'm better. First time I gave a talk, I stood up, my mind sat back down. I mean, you know, I've been through that whole deal. Open my mouth, nothing came out for a while. My knees are banging together, the sweat's pouring off my face, I'm shaking like a leaf. It's called terror, in case you haven't tried it. <laughs> Those first attempts, but I'm telling you, I got through it, and I did it again, and I got through it, and I did it again, and I got through it. And now, of course, I can lecture for a few hours in one day. Anybody can get bed, develop the skill, okay? Handle the upcoming winter. Don't wish away the winters, that's called naive. Wish for the skills, wish for the strength, wish for the wisdom. Here's the second major lesson in life to learn. Learn how to take advantage of the spring. Uniquely enough, spring follows winter. And pray tell how often? Six and a half thousand times. I mean, those are good odds. I'd gamble on it one more time. I mean, those are good odds. Every time, you can't beat those odds. Spring is called opportunity. Another day is called opportunity. Days follow night about that. And how often? Every day. But now here's what we must learn to do with opportunity. Underline two strategic words in that sentence. Take advantage. Just the, uh, just because spring comes, there's no sign you're going to look good in the fall. You've got to take advantage of it. You've got to do something with it. Read every book you can on what to do with your spring, what to do with your opportunities, what to do with your days, what to do with your chances. Don't miss the educational process. Don't miss the process of learning. To understand, opportunity keeps coming, but the key is taking advantage, taking advantage. Everybody in this room's got to learn to do one of two Thing. Plant in the spring or beg in the fall. And it doesn't mean you can't become a sophisticated beggar, but you don't need the reputation.
learn to plant in the spring, take advantage. And there's an urgency here on springtime because there's just a few springs, handful of springs offered to each of us. So take advantage swiftly and quickly. Don't just let the time pass. The Beatles wrote, life is very short. And for John Lennon, it was extra short. For Michael Landon, it was extra short. Life is short. At the longest, it's short. So don't just let the springs pass, pass, pass. Take advantage. Seize the day. Seize the moment. Seize the opportunity. It's the key. Springtime. Life is fragile. Life is brief. Elton John sings she lived her life like a candle in the wind. It's fragile. It's brief. Whatever you're going to do, you got to get at it. Don't just let it pass away. Here's major lesson number three. In the summer, learn how to nourish and protect. We've got two challenges in the summer, in the personal development part of our life. And that is become capable, powerful enough in the summer, and wise enough in the summer to nourish what's good and defend yourself against what's bad. Nourish and defend. Summertime is an interesting time. It holds the possibility of the promise of harvest time, but it also has the possibility of the threat. Sure enough, as soon as you've planted your garden, the busy bugs and the noxious weeds are out to take it. And let me give you another word of advice. They will take it unless you prevent it. Summertime is an interesting time. Best as I can describe summertime, you got to nourish your values like a mother. Nourish like a mother. Go after the threat to the values you've got like a father. Deal with the weeds, kill the weed, nourish the garden and kill the weed. That's called summertime. What a challenging time. Give life like a mother, take life like a father. Summertime. You gotta deal with the negative as well as the positive. Summertime is a unique, complex mix of positive and negative. Opportunity and threat. What a scenario of life itself. Opportunity and threat to the opportunity. And you got to deal with both. You gotta think positive and you gotta think negative. You gotta handle what's ever out to threaten you. You got to learn to threaten it back. Summertime. Interesting time. Nourish like a mud. Defend like a father. You gotta be like your bloodstream in the summer. Red corpuscles to what? Nourish. White corpuscles to what? Fight. You got to both nourish and fight. You got to nourish and be vigilant. White corpuscles think negative. You can't just think positive. We call you naive. Somebody says, well, I've been taught to be all positive. You'll be some kind of freak. You can't be all positive. Thank God for white corpuscles that think negative all day. Guess what white corpuscles are looking for all day? Problems, infection. White corpuscles say, just show me some infection, I'll kill it. Why? It's out to kill the body. It's out to kill our chances. It's out to kill our future. Whatever threatens us, we threaten. I'm asking you to take sword to your enemy. Whatever's out to threaten you, threaten your health, you gotta threaten it back. Like white corpus, kill what's evil, nourish what's good. Love like a mother, hate like a father. Okay, Daddy, I wake out of the door. I am walk over the airport, which is like three steps from our by dad's in behind the scene. I see him in the kitchen behind our screen with my mom. My mom crying, my dad like I got right and I knock on the door. There is screen, the big ray all tatted up shut on he thought the street what up did it he said i am big ray dad i have come over the kick and row as i cannot come home for dinner so and i row goes i like the kind of prey let let and serious i hear him at the door right Right, right. I tell you, right. And get over here, little red, little birdless come running up, right. He goes, hey, little idiot, want to another pieces, Ray. Goes, let's do this like crepe. Wake kingdom down his stairs. And I could see my dad in the screen over. And I like my, and I never forget on the two car. And my dad distance by two ten organ has back on his dad. Green Pinito Fixel our street right there in their driving oil all over the driving because big raw wood change never delivery we got to their big gozes you got to raw come and buy some forces of share blessing from 
I got the little dude and hook it. I'm driving daddy give up some nudies remember. I really know how hit him and I'm looking hell out of this kid. I'm looking just moogining and I'm rippling off hair his dream. Thank you for watching like share and subscribe.